But this here, this is the number one feature. Behold, from the roof, a 31 inch 8K touchscreen. This, this is actually playing from the speakers. Are you ready? <laughs> now what you're looking at is a near 10,000 pound optional extra. So hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Scotland. We are at Grassix BMW in Perth. And today we are running you through the top 10 features of the new BMW i7. Are you ready? Okay, first things first, this might not be a word that you associate with a luxury limousine, but aerodynamics. Yes, the front of this car has had some substantial time in a wind tunnel in order to reduce the front end friction because this is an all electric model. As a result, you can achieve over 300 miles on a single charge, but a contributing factor to that electric efficiency is the ultra low drag coefficient of the front end in part to that wind tunnel time, which means you can achieve up to 388 miles of electric driving from the new i7. So as part of this impressive EV architecture, BMW have installed a fast charging, a rapid charging structure, which allows you to pump in 80 miles of range in under 10 minutes. As far as top-ups go, that's actually pretty quick. Let's just take a minute and talk about the size of this thing. 5.4 meters long. There's no such thing as an extended wheelbase version with the new i7. This is it. One size fits all, and we'll show you the benefits of that on the inside shortly, but man, has this thing got some road presence. One of the more subtle options on this car is the M Pro Sport Pack, which gives you upgraded larger brakes, a gloss black surround around the windows and ultraviolet sun protection. But it does basically aesthetically just set the car off and makes it look that little bit cooler. Now, one of the optional extras on the new BMW i7 is, wait for it, Swarovski crystal headlights. Now, the main point of this is to underpin the luxurious ethos of what this car represents. But actually, on the practical side, the upgraded headlights offer more projection of light when you're driving down the road. And because of its 5.4 meter wheelbase, it has what BMW calls integral active steering. It's what the rest of the world call rear wheel steering. But it's just to help keep this thing in check when you're going around tight, twisty spaces. But for all the development that we've spoken about on the exterior of the car, for me, this car is defined entirely by the interior experience. Okay, now inside, interestingly, even their top of the range flagship car adopts their new infotainment and digital instrument cluster display. So this is one single curved screen. When you sit in front of it, it looks awesome. I've seen a few comments from the outside. It does look like it's sort of stuck on the dash, but take it from me. When you sit in front of this thing, it is a commanding spaceship feeling. Now you've got 14.9 inches of screen on the left-hand side, and for the instrument cluster, you've got 12.3 inches. And on the side here, this is all touchscreen. Now what I really like, and this is a subtle tactile detail, but this screen actually has a satin finish to it. Now there's multiple perks to that. First of all, the way that your fingers glide over the surface, because it's satin, it's not tacky. Sometimes gloss screens can sort of have that sticky feeling on them, which doesn't make interacting and, and sliding over them that easy. Also, it minimizes the amount of glare off this screen. So it's much easier to read in direct sunlight and you don't get any sticky finger marks because it doesn't have a glossy, sticky surface. So all in all, to interact with, it's super cool. But the design of the graphics of the infotainment, it's so crisp, it's so clear. The amount of apps that you have available now, even quite handy practical things like Ringo. Take, for example, this. If you haven't heard of it, this is a parking app. We use this app regularly over here in the UK. So rather than having to fumble for change down the side of your sofa to see if you can go and park on a street side, you can register an account with Ringo and park up anywhere in town and pay for it within your car. All they need now is Waze inbuilt because they already have Spotify inbuilt and you kind of wouldn't actually have to plug in your phone at all to use most of the things you need. That being said, if you want to, there is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay integrated. But generally, just look at the overall BMW graphics that they've done on this. I think one of the really nice touches as well is that by and large, they represent the car that you're in 
on the actual screen itself. So that represents the spec of the configuration of the i7 that we're actually sat in right now. And that gives you a good idea of how absolutely freezing it is outside. Importantly, you can add widgets. So if you press this, you can customize your screen depending on what you use on the daily or what driver profile you've got set up. But all in all, as something to interact with, stare at and use, I think they've done a brilliant job on this latest generation of infotainment. Now in the world of automotive interiors, I've always said that Bentley, just in my personal opinion, have generally set the benchmarks for tactile, beautiful interior spaces. Now I know this isn't quite up there with a Bentley, but this is really starting to take the lead in its class and really elevate itself towards the level of a Bentley. Now just check out this down here. You'd be forgiven at first for thinking that this sort of crystal detailing here is just for decoration, but this is actually an indicative, reactive, responsive screen. Take for example, if I press these hazard lights here, so the whole dash reacts to whatever's going on in the car. So if you change your driver mode, if you put it into a more sporting driving setting that is represented by the lights, which are integrated in this sort of crystal style display that wraps around the whole cabin. It's just elevated it to a different degree. And then here's the other thing. Notice how clean the dash is. What is missing from this dashboard that makes it so clean? Air vents. They are hidden. They are literally hidden in this split line, this crease line here, okay? So this is where your air emits and there are subtle controllers. I mean, if we look over on the passenger side here, just look at that. It's like behind this crystal display. This is the direction channeling. Look, it's integrated into these subtle slots just to keep the dashboard really clean. I mean, what's the point after all of having this, this big touchscreen here? One of the points of that is to remove the need for all of the buttons, which would otherwise be associated with a lot of the functionality on here, and then sticking all of those other things on. They've cleaned it up and thought about this and put this really subtle slot there for where your aircon and your airflow comes from. It's a nice touch. The ambient sounds associated with this car have actually been conducted by none other than famous composer Hans Zimmer. That's right, BMW commissioned Hans Zimmer in order to create the sounds which are emitted from this car. So if we're, if we're quiet, when this starts up, or when I say starts up because it's an EV, it sort of just turns on. See that? That sort of ambient tone, it's just, it's just always softly under there, like a, it's almost reminds me of the sort of loading screen of a video game. You're sort of anticipating that the car is about to do something. And then look at this, look at the display which has come on the screen here. I mean, it really is interesting how brands are starting to think, okay, these are EVs, how are we going to elevate not only the luxury, because for me, the electric platform is so well suited to a car like this. I mean, by definition, they're supposed to be effortless, quiet, refined with a lot of torque to make them that effortless waft of drive. That's what electric does. And then to take that and sort of elevate it through these tactile experiences, audible, visual, tactile, it's pretty cool. From a luxury space, electric gets me excited. From a supercar sports car space, let's talk about that a different time. Now, back to Mr. Zimmer. So. Effectively, this is your sort of pending tone. It's just a very subtle sound. It's almost like you're sort of in the other room and his um, orchestra is warming up in the studio just to prepare you for what's to come. It's quite cool. And also, the thought of that sound, think about how important it is to make sure that you never get sick of a sound that you might hear every single time you start a car. Right, you've got to be confident in your strings. And something that's quite hard to sort of explain on camera is the tactile feeling of everything. Honestly, everything you interact with, the leather, the feeling of switch gear, this sort of crystal dial here that helps you interact with the infotainment system. It has a beautiful weight to it, this stunning finish. Everything has just felt like they've gone, right, ground zero, reset. How are we going to punch this above our competitors. I don't know if you've been in a latest generation Merc right now, but this is feeling just that one step 
ahead. It's very, very cool. Now, if you think the front's great, let me show you the back. As beautiful as the front is, I can't help but think it's all about the rear of this car. Like it's dominated. This category of car, I'm sure it'll drive well. We'll go for a drive shortly. But the back of this, I mean, we're really encroaching on the whole Rolls-Royce experience here. Now, check this out down here. There is a sort of, for want of a better term, a sort of micro iPad touchscreen integrated into the door handle. And this allows you to control your environment. You can control your seats, the blinds. Some of these are optional extras. But this here, this is the number one feature, right? If we go into display, now check this out. Fold down, behold, from the roof, a 31 inch 8K touchscreen. It's like a mini IMAX in here. Look at it, look at that. <laughs> Literally BMW theater screen. Now what you're looking at is a near 10, thousand pound optional extra. In terms of rear seat infotainment, I think it's game changing. I think it's probably the best example that I've ever seen. And other brands are gonna have to step it up because the integration of it, the fact that this also touchscreen, right? So look, I mean, look at this. The car is available with uh, inbuilt 5G connections. So you can have Wi-Fi inside, you can have 5G uh, outside to receive the signal and off you go. Just plumb in your accounts, catch up on Netflix, YouTube. Right now the app list is, it is extensive. I mean, pick your genre, music, entertainment, games, news, weather, business and finance. One of the things we did pick up on just here, very subtly integrated, but that is a camera. So it wouldn't be a far stretch to suggest that you could probably hold a video call within here. I mean, there's executive and then there's that. Look how many apps there are, it's, I mean, scrolling, four days. I've never seen anything this extensive from an infotainment media system in a car or this well integrated, but it's it's very, very trick. And then there's cool little details like wireless charging. Now connectivity, you're not short of charging points because there are one, two, three, four, and a fifth USB-C points on the back of this TV screen. Now then, the point of having such a wide screen is that you can actually reposition the content on it. So say for example, you were only sat in the left passenger seat. So just the left hand side of the passenger who was riding along can see what's happening. And equally, if you then hop back into the right hand side, and then all of this becomes like a split screen for other apps and utilities. Just remember we're in a car. <laughs> we're not on a desktop workstation here. This is the back of a seven series. And then there's the audio, of which the Bowers and Wilkins system is disproportionately punchy. The bass in here is solid. I'm sure this is great to drive, but I just wanna spend time in the back. It's awesome. And to top it all off, if it didn't get immersive enough, at the flick of a button, theater mode. Just completely isolates you from the whole world and actually shuts the curtains to immerse you in that screen. And then there's general leg room, head room, room room, body room. The, it's, this is better than Emirates first class in here. I mean, just the head space in here. And I think as well, something else which is really important to touch on, the amount of glass that allows light to cascade inside the interior enhances that feeling of space as well. So not only is it physically genuinely roomy, They've also sort of enhanced that as well by flooding in loads of light and keeping it super spacious. Are we ready? Listen to this. This is, this is not in the edit. This is actually playing from the speakers. Are you ready? I can't make my mind up about this Hans Zimmer thing. I mean, it's the first time driving this car, so it's novel, right? It's, it's a novel experience, but it's like there's an orchestra following you around. <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's important to remember that this is an electric car. Now, because these cars historically are so refined and quiet anyway, you are forgiven for thinking that at first shot, 
But actually, when it really drives home is when you mash the throttle. Oh, have you heard the sound? First of all, the throttle response is ridiculous. Of course, this is all wheel drive, but here's where Hans really comes into his own. <laughs> I mean, you must be able to turn that off because it's borderline ridiculous. But actually, this smile's real as a result. What a thing. Well, there's one thing for sure. It doesn't hang around. 544 brake horsepower, over 740 newton meters of torque. The car is heavy. I mean, it's over two tons. It's packed full of battery and tech and all sorts of disproportionate luxury. But the power and the torque combined, I'm trying to imagine the discussion in the boardroom at BMW and you know their reasoning behind this because it is cool but I'd probably turn it off after a few days. Anyway, the whole point of electrification for me in a luxurious car is to further the purpose of the vehicle. Effortless torque, big power, and of course, silence. Those three things are great, but of course, what comes with electrification is of course, a complete lack of vibration from any mechanical moving parts that you may otherwise find in an internal combustion engine car. So it really literally irons out the resonance, the audible creases that you may otherwise get from an internal combustion engine car. Now, obviously, Rolls-Royce do a very good job of that with their V12. There's hands again. It changes a little bit. How does it, how does it do that? Sometimes he throws in a few more keys, depending on the way you're driving. How did they set the tone for this car? As it happens in this particular car, because it's, it's all black and stealth pack and a little bit moody, that suits it. But what if it was sort of bright blue? You know, would it be a little bit more lively? I don't think a sort of, you know, let's go for a San Marino blue i7. That tone doesn't say San Marino to me, but it does say black. Can you program it to, or do they have different versions of different colors of car? Anyway, back to the boardroom. What was there? I would have loved to have been around that table. I mean, there is somewhat of an orchestra connected to my throttle pedal. This has got to be one of the most unique driving experiences I've ever had. Wow. Back to it having a complete lack of vibration and resonance. In fact, the tires themselves are lined with a foam in order to uh, strip out any acoustics from the road noise. It is by definition engineered to perform in a luxury space. So everything that you interact with is just designed to sort of quieten things down, slow the world down, isolate you from any outside noise, and just relax. The most impressive thing, or craziest thing, depending on how you want to look at it, is as you approach a junction, say you sort of cruise to an almost stop and then get back on the gas again, there's a change in sort of tone. Right, so if I just urge this throttle now, look, different sound. You see that? Boom. Right? But if I accelerate, it's the wildest thing. Wildest feature on a luxury car I've seen in a very long time. Here's the other thing. I'm currently turning around, reversing on an icy bank because of the way that they can do very fancy torque vectoring with this all wheel drive electric torque pattern. I mean, it's coming up here effortlessly. Like I feel pretty confident in it, despite the fact that I'm basically on ice. There's nothing to this car in terms of theater, right? It's just, it just does its job very well, which is luxury through and through, that is it. I'm not encouraged to grab it by the scruff of its neck and send it 10 tenths because that's not what it's about. In fact, because it's so impressively engineered to perform quietly, and luxuriously, however you want to define that, you try and play to those strengths and slow things down a bit and drive it gracefully. You'll notice I'm sort of holding the steering wheel with my fingertips rather than grabbing it like that, just by the way this car is programmed to make me feel, which is impressive. It's doing its job by my very demeanor until Hans gets involved. Now it's 140,000 pound sterling, sir, for a well-specced i7 
I think you've got to realize how heavy this thing is punching. I would say above its weight. And the reason I say that is because this has the electric drivetrain that the Rolls-Royce Spectre has installed in it. That is a big part as to why this thing feels so refined because it is, by definition, Rolls-Royce standards. However, at 140 grand, well specced, you could have one of these and a new Range Rover for the same price as a Rolls-Royce Spectre. Or you could have one of these and a fairly decent sports car for the same price as the Rolls-Royce Spectre. I know that's not the point. I know a Rolls is in a different bracket of luxury, but as a spot of context, as to how high this thing punches, this is bringing it so hard to the S-Class. BMW have become quite clever with their product categorization because if you want the equivalent from Mercedes, it is an EQ product, an EQC, for example, which is their all-electric version. It's not an electric S-Class, whereas this is an electric 7 series. You can also have this with an internal combustion engine as a hybrid. So it's still the iconic 7 series that we all sort of know and love, but it's available as a full EV platform. Whereas Mercedes have gone and developed their own complete subgenre of car in order to achieve the same thing that this has. As a result, it feels a more familiar car. Also, I guess you could kind of compare it with, I don't know, a Tesla, maybe not in the luxury department, but in terms of the battery platform, they have a similar range. And then, of course, there is uh, the new kids on the block from Lucid, the Lucid Air, which I actually think is fairly close to this thing. Only the Lucid, in terms of performance, would rip this thing a new alternator. So anyway, there's one thing being in the front driving this, but I do feel a little bit like a chauffeur. Okay, seamless transition to the rear of the i7, and despite everything we've just said, this really, for me, is kind of the defining feature of the car. Check out the legroom. This is, this is Emirates first class back here. This is absolutely incredible. I've got my massage seat on, my heated seat on, and wait for it, heated armrest. So I've got a cozy elbow right now. It's, they've really thought of everything. But actually, for me, the defining feature has got to be the screen and theatre mode. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching, we'll just see you next time. Ciao!